Hello. I just met you or know of you a few months ago. You've known us a long time. We're just getting reacquainted. And um, in a month, you helped me manifest a family vacation that we desperately needed because we had come off of three years of hardship with my daughter's epilepsy. Yeah. At seven years old, she had her first seizure on yep. Christmas. Yep. And um, I had PTSD from that because of all the meds. So I manifested this Montana horse ranch vacation. We went and I asked Montana to take my pain and it did. And I came back healthy and my daughter's fine. Now, you know what you are? You are the best example that we've ever seen of someone who had a desire that was strong enough that it wiped out your resistance. That's the power of a strong desire. When a desire is strong enough and then you got the momentum going and then off you went. So don't spend too much time regurgitating what was happening before that. Let this new that has happened be the new conversation. Because you can return to what was if you keep talking about it. I know. And well, it's I all right. It's unlikely. You had a powerful desire that shifted a lot. And it's much more likely that it remains shifted than that it goes back. But there's a tendency to want to explain the transformation. Don't do it. I think it's hard because there was a video made about her because it's so rare what she has. The ketogenic is, diet is what saved her, not the brain surgeries. And now that's huge. And I feel like... Well, look at it all as steps along the way. This was there because that's what you could let in. And then that was there because that's what you could let in. And now this is there because that's what you can let in. There's always going to be something more. Always going to be another step. Jerry took Esther to Montana. It's one of his favorite things to do. They floated around on the Bitterroot River all summer long, put their little raft in the water and fished. And Jerry showed Esther, he was a fly fisherman. He liked to run on the rocks. And that river was particularly good because there were lots of rocks in it. And he would just leap from rock to rock to rock to rock to rock to rock to rock. He could be out on that water all day long and never get his feet wet. And Esther would say, how do you do that? And he said, I know there's always another rock and I know I can reach it. As Esther waded around up to her thighs in the water. She said, well, they're not there for me. But he'd practiced that for a lot of years. Well, there's always another rock. There's always a way to keep your feet dry. There is always another and another and another. You just have to accept the confidence that the next idea will always be there for you. Mm -hmm. I think I also can't feel I can't stop talking about it because I feel she has become the poster child well, that's all right. for finding this cure. What's the downside of that? I guess my retelling the story. Well, just tell the good parts. Okay. Don't get into the suffer and sacrifice. In other words, it's hard to let go of that, but Yeah, it well, was bad. But is it now? No, and that's what I can't shake. It's all right. She's fine and I can't get it. You know what you're doing here? You've given us something really fun that we're going to carry from this conversation and use a lot from this point forward because it's so powerful. Do you know that you've given us the best way of saying this about humans and their beliefs? You've got post-traumatic stress syndrome. That's what your beliefs are. That's what your beliefs are. You believe stuff because your past has been a certain way and then you keep focusing on it and it holds you back. You don't have to do that. We thought that was way funnier than you did. <laughs> <laughs> we know for sure that if you're little and you go running to see the train, there's the train, there's the train, there's the train, and the train chops your toe off. <laughs> you're going to have a way different relationship with trains than most other people. It's just the way that it is. And so that's not hard to accept or to understand, is it? But you don't have to keep talking about it. So let's chew here for just a little bit because you're not alone in this. You are a strongly pointed, exaggerated version of it right now, which is beneficial in a conversation. You know what's so interesting? Humans are problem solvers. First, we have another story. We want to come back to that point. Will you bring us back to that point when we finish this story? Humans are problem solvers. Will you bring us back there? 
So Jerry and Esther in Del Mar, and there's a hill that they would drive up, and they would drive their car up to the top of Torrey Pines, park their car in the ranger's parking lot near the lodge, and then they would walk. And every day as they're driving up, there were walkers who weren't driving to the top, they were walking to the top. So it was really a road for cars, but it was also a walkway for a lot of people. And every day Esther's driving, and every day there are people in the way, and every day Jerry says, honk. <laughs> and every day Esther says, I can't make myself do that. Because when you are on foot and a car honks at you, it is unsettling. I can't honk. And Jerry would say, all right, then just follow them up the hill because they're walking five across from each other like there's no cars on the road. And since Esther refused to honk, then it was going to be a slow drive <laughs> up the hill. So then Jerry went to the bicycle shop and he got a little bell. <laughs> ring, 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 ring. And his plan was to find the inconsiderate ones, <laughs> roll down his window and ring the bell. They were never there again. <laughs> he never got to ring his bell. It was so disappointing to him. He said, Abraham, what happened to all of them? And we said, when you find the solution, the problem goes away. <laughs> so in like manner, now you have a solution, but we want to talk about this just a little bit because before you could have a solution, you had to have a problem. So you had a lot of investment in it. There was a lot of suffering that happened before the solution. And now you've got the solution. It sort of feels like you want to explain everything that came before the solution. You see what we're getting at? It's sort of like you want to justify the solution by identifying and amplifying the problem. But you really don't want to do that. You just want to go straight to the solution. So many people hold themselves in places that they don't want to be. It's sort of like, I earned this solution and I'd like to explain to you how hard it was to earn this solution. But in the explaining how hard it was to earn the solution, now you're not a perfect vibrational match to the solution. And you know what made you a vibrational match to the solution? You gave up. You gave the problem a rest. You said, Montana, save us. And what you meant was distract us from the problem. That's a clue. You want to stay as distracted from the problem as you can by reveling in the solution. And do you know what? There are not two people on the planet that have exactly the same problem on their way to a solution. So you don't need to keep regurgitating your problem in order to justify your solution or even in order to explain it. Somebody else can do that. Let somebody else do that. Let somebody else do that that is still more a vibrational match to the problem. You are more a vibrational match to the solution. One more question. Um, so being fairly uh, new to this. Um, you can say that if you want to, but you heard everything we said. You calibrated right to it and yeah. you got it completely. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if you're new or old, you got it. I got it. I got it. Okay, so... <laughs> That's like someone going to the top of a building and stepping off and falling down. And other people saying, I didn't think that person had learned about gravity. <laughs> and yet, they fell down instead of... Yeah. <laughs> So I guess I'll cut, go straight to my question. When I came, what I understand now, and, and I think it might be just me um, calibrating to all those others before me that didn't to calibrate with that, that I didn't um, deserve what I have. Or Before what? you go further, we want to stick something in here. Yes. This matters that you get this, yes. all of you. <sighs> we like telling you this so much. We love you so much. <laughs> we don't want to give you the impression that calibrating to a problem is a wrong thing or a terrible thing because you know why? The whole time you're calibrating to a problem, you know what else you're doing? Creating a solution. So when you're calibrating to a problem, you're creating a solution because the calibration is waves that are equal. 
so when you're calibrating to the problem you're creating the solution now you just want to decide whether you want to give your attention to the solution or to the problem so don't be hard on yourself about anything that came before okay uh, that, I guess that's the answer to my it is the answer not one of you said as you made the decision to come into this experience this physical body this time I'll go but clean it all up before I get there I don't want any contrast I don't want any decisions to make I just want the good stuff so get it all ready and then I'll just float in not one of you said that because you didn't want to give up the satisfaction factor of calibrating to a problem launching a solution then recalibrating to the solution that's what deliberate creation is you cannot calibrate to a solution that you haven't first calibrated to the problem oh mm. oh mm -hmm. never said that before that matters that's why you calibrated to a problem then you calibrated to the solution and now you don't want to give up the problem because it feels like the calibration of the problem was so important to the solution mm -hmm. do you get that mm -hmm. and I had made when my twins she has a twin brother and when they were born and all the first seven years of life I made a pact with God and I said if I do this if I do these um, philanthropic things and raise money for women with breast cancer and do these things every year you take care of my babies and then but you were not making that bargain with God you were making that bargain with dysfunctional humans God doesn't make a bargain like that sure and that's why I feel guilty like no I don't feel guilty this. brought this to her there's no hope for you <laughs> We came so far and now you're going to That's just dumb. That's just dumb. You've come way past that. That was just an old thing that you used to say that used to make sense that now doesn't fit at all. Did you feel how weird that was? Are you telling us that the solution wasn't worth that? Are you? I don't understand that question. Well, see, everybody that comes into the physical experience comes knowing that out of it will come desire. Nobody comes saying, I'm not willing to have the experience that will create the desire. All come with a willingness to create desire. And think about it. Can that be wrong? If you are an eternal being, since you are an eternal being, and since desire is born out of contrast, then desire can't be bad. And if desire can't be bad then the contrast that created the desire can't be bad so why are you trying to turn your contrast in something that is bad when everything that is physical is about that why are you making yourself the exception you see yeah old habits they're old habits that you picked up along your physical trail from other people who are misunderstanding but now you understand and that's what this is all about maybe you can help break the cycle of the misunderstanding maybe you are not going to keep regurgitating the same old crap that makes the same old crap that makes the same old crap maybe you're going to be fresh and new maybe you're going to step into the new segment with a new point of attraction maybe you can tune yourself to what you intend to maybe you can calibrate to well being and strength and clarity and abundance and all of the stuff that's in the vortex and you would not have anything close to that desire if you had not lived that I got it I got it you got it thank you yes you did really good thank you really good